Our first speaker is Mr. Matthias Fuller, Senior Marketing Director of NXP Semiconductors. His topic is Next Generation Comfort and Safety Features Drive Growing ADAS Demand. Let's welcome him. 请各位现场嘉宾为我们讲师带来热烈的掌声鼓励 Very well, good afternoon. It's a pleasure to open this session. Uh, welcome. So we'll hear about the trends in uh, future safety features and comfort features for vehicles that will drive growing ADAS demand in the future. A um, couple of key points we are going to touch on. Uh, what is the market outlook? What are the advanced use cases that will drive demand in the future? We will look at key enabling technologies, and in particular, we'll look at advanced single-chip radar integration and at high-resolution 4D imaging radar. So starting with the market outlook, um, where we see growth in ADAS demand, and this is a 2030 view of the market, on the one hand, there is growth in higher levels of auto uh, autonomy, Level four features, we see robo-taxis, we see autonomous transportation services enter into the marketplace. But at the same time, the growth is going to remain modest. So 4% of vehicle production in 2030. On the other hand, these vehicles will be equipped with a large number of very high performance sensors to really accurately monitor the environment of the vehicle. But on the other hand, here shown in the middle, where the lion's share of the growth will happen, that is for so-called level two, level two plus vehicles that are driven by the introduction of new comfort features like highway pilot, automated park assist, traffic jam assist, etc., where the driver is still assumed to be present, which is getting us around the liability issue with higher levels of autonomy. And here you see we expect in 2030 that this segment of the market is going to be almost 50% of the vehicle production, where mid-range vehicles will be equipped, in particular looking at the radar sensors, with as many as five sensors, and premium vehicles might be equipped with as many as 10 sensors at that point in time. Now, what that translates into, specifically looking at automotive radar sensors, that is a so-called triple acceleration, where more cars will be equipped with radar driven by safety regulations. We'll have more radar sensors per vehicle driven by new comfort features, 360 degree surround sensing. And eventually there's a uh, growing demand for more performant radar sensors where we can accurately monitor the environment of the vehicle. And that does translate into this S-shaped growth curve we see on the right hand side where now in 2024, we'll have approximately two radar sensors per car uh, relative to the overall vehicle production. By 2027, we'll have three, and in the long run, we'll aim for five radar sensors on average at 100 million units produced per year. This is 500 million sensors per year in the long run. So uh, what do car manufacturers want, actually? What do OEMs want? Uh, uh, OEMs, they do want an integrated sensor suite. They do not want island solutions. They want scalability. And what, what does that actually mean? And where are we starting from? So today, today, most vehicles are equipped with three radar sensors, one in the front for cruise control automated emergency braking, two rear sensors for blind spot detection. But now let's look at 2025. So the introduction of new comfort features results in more sensors equipped. Mid-range vehicles will have five sensors, four corner, one front. We'll need longer detection ranges so we can detect these objects further out in the distance. Premium vehicles will have as many as 10 sensors rear-facing sensors, side-facing sensors, so we can get advanced 360 degree surround sensing. And eventually, we'll want to have high-resolution sensing. So 4D imaging radar, you'll often hear about, 
where we can accurately detect and separate and classify those objects we find all around the vehicle, the pedestrians next to the vehicle, the motorcycle next to the truck. So how do we address that, this need for an integrated sensor or a switch? So here is what we suggest. So we suggest a scalable radar platform that covers all the use cases from corner radar through classical long-range front radar to the high-resolution radar sensors based on a common architecture. So common IPs are supporting reuse, quick development cycles, faster time to market. Uh, we are suggesting common IPs all across these use cases while we have tailor-made sensor chipset solutions. We'll use advanced process nodes, 16 nanometer FinFET for high performance radar processing, 28 nanometer RF CMOS for single chip radar integration together with innovations in signal processing in silicon IP. And eventually we'll build on a common base of safety and security as a trusted partner for the automotive industry. And uh, what that means for the market, uh, when we look uh, at the growth trajectory, we are coming from 60 million sensors shipped annually in 2018. We've reached about 120 million units shipped in 2022. And by 2025, we will reach already 220 million units radar sensors shipped annually. And as NXP, uh, we are capturing in 22 almost half of the radar sensor or chipset market share with a growing momentum due to these growth drivers we have invested into early on. 77 gigahertz sensors for advanced 360 degrees round sensing and high resolution front radar sensors. So next, uh, what are the advanced use cases and the enabling technologies? So uh, in essence, it's new safety requirements and new comfort features which are being introduced going forward. And we see here on the left-hand side, it's about um, more accurately detecting vulnerable road users like the motorcycle next to the truck at a distance. Common requirements, we need to detect a motorcycle 200 meters down the street, a small object. On the other hand, it is new use cases like uh, the uh, urban pilot, where in a busy urban environment, we have many things going on around the vehicle, uh, cycles, pedestrians, static objects, uh, like the traffic light, maybe even the curbstone, that we all need to be able to detect, separate, and classify accurately through an image-like sensing through a high-density point cloud. And the technologies that we are investing into that will make this happen are, on the one hand, high-performance single-chip radar integration, and on the other hand, 4D imaging radar that allows image-like radar sensing like you would enable, like, like would expect from a camera sensor, and possibly replacing much more costly LiDAR sensors. So first of all, um, a closer look at one chip radar integration based on 28 nanometer RF CMOS technology. So earlier in the year, we introduced the SAF8500, which is already our third generation RF CMOS radar. At this point, industry's first and only 28 nanometer RF CMOS radar chip. And what does that do for us? So we are getting higher levels of integration. So the radar chip now fits onto a fingertip. So this is how small it can get. And with that, we get really small form factor sensors. So you see that sensor we demonstrated earlier in the year at Consumer Electronics Show in Las Vegas. It's a five by five centimeter footprint. Easy integration into the vehicle uh, blends in, serves the uh, dictate of industrial design. What it means as well, 28 nanometer RF CMOS steps up the millimeter wave, the RF capabilities, and that gets us longer detection range. Now we can see the motorcycle 200 meters down the road. Now we can see larger vehicles like trucks or cars 300 meters down the road. 
when we compare, as I said before, uh, this is our third generation RFC MOS already. We've done first two RFC MOS generations that are in production today in 40 nanometer. We see 28 nanometer offers compared to 40 or 45 nanometer for that part, a significant compute performance increase, and in particular, a significant RF performance increase that enables us to see further out into the distance, that enables us to see smaller objects, that enables us to more accurately separate these objects. And to illustrate that, uh, how that actually can be seen at a sensor level, we have built this sensor with a PCB antenna you see in the upper left-hand corner, and we've measured the detection probability. So how likely is it that we see the object where the color coding means uh, probability, and yellow is 100% probability. So what we can see is the outer ring is 270 meters, that at more than 200 meters, we get really accurate detection of the motorcycle. So now we can see these sm smaller objects, which we could not see in the past with 40 or 45 nanometer technologies. So that is key advantage of 28 nanometer RFC was radar. And in essence, uh, it does enable really a couple of new capabilities that uh, allow us now to do all around sensing, 360 degree, we see distance, angle, uh, resolution, we see elevation, we detect the objects, we have elevation sensing, so 4D sensing with a corner radar, so really a different level of radar sensing compared to what we've seen before. Then let's talk about 4D imaging radar, so high resolution 4D radar sensing. So what, what does 4D imaging radar do for us? So three main things we expect from a high resolution sensor. There's sub-degree angular resolution, so we can separate one object from the other one. There's a high density point cloud, so we want to get more details about each and every object, so we can do proper object classification. And eventually, our 4D imaging radar does three-in-one sensing across different ranges, different field of views, so we can observe different scenes all around the vehicle. Now, in order to deliver a good imaging radar, you need actually a whole lot of ingredients. So there isn't a single thing. We need to master the RF CMOS for the millimeter wave front end, we need to master high-performance processing with dedicated radar acceleration to do the heavy number crunching required for high-resolution algorithms. We need to handle MIMO waveforms so we can operate all the antennas simultaneously. We need to master the antenna design, and we need to work on the algorithmic side to enhance beyond raw hardware capabilities high resolution processing algorithms, interference mitigation, etc. That makes for a good 4D imaging radar sensor. And that now allows us to really do LiDAR-like high density point cloud detection with a radar sensor where we get in this busy urban scene in front of a shopping mall a lot of detail about the objects that are in front of our vehicle, the pedestrians, the cars, static objects you see on the side here, all clearly visible, all well separated, can be classified based on radar sensor data. But it's not just the uh, environmental mapping, the high density point cloud sensing near the vehicle. Radar sensor for the imaging radar sensor allows us to do multi-mode operation, three in one sensing. So we get the near field environmental mapping, we get mid to long range sensing on the highway, and we get advanced elevation sensing when we need to drive through underneath a bridge, when we need to drive into a parking garage and want to accurately understand if the vehicle will fit through. With that, there are a few things I would like you to take away from this session. So automotive radar growth 
continues uh, at a rapid pace. There are safety and comfort functions being introduced going forward uh, that will continue to drive that growth. And 28 nanometer RFC MOS single chip radar integration as well as high resolution 4D imaging radar will actually enable these uh, new features and will drive future growth going forward. With that, I would like to thank you for your attention. Thank you, Matthias, for your wonderful sharing.